If you have a slow website, I can guarantee you one thing, you do not have optimized images. Images are the biggest drain on a website when it comes to loading in data. Thankfully, Astro gives you great tools to work with images. We're gonna talk about where you can put images in the public folder, the SRC directory, or in any public remote image. And then secondly, we're going to talk about the three tools that Astro gives you. You have the image component, the picture component, and finally the get image function that you can use server side. Now, if you're interested more in working with images, I have an entire module on my course at learnastro.dev where you can get all the details, but this high level overview should give you everything you need to get started. You ready? Let's jump in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. All right, we're gonna talk about images in two different stages. First of all, we're gonna talk about where you can place images when you're optimizing them with Astro. And secondly, we're gonna talk about the three tools you get available to you in Astro. Now we're gonna be fairly surface level because I can't go into every single detail available here, but hopefully this will give you enough to get started with. Okay, so first of all, where can you place images? Well, there are two places you can place them inside of your file directory. One would be inside the public directory, and this will be at the root of your site. So if you were to reference this in your page, so let's come over this way, and let's say we're gonna reference the image right here, you would simply reference it as an SRC property here, just right at the base of your site. So public.jpg will reference it right over this way, right? So it's just gonna pull it in right here. So that's the first thing you can do, is put it in your public directory. Now, if you put it in your public directory, Astro cannot touch this on build. So that's important to note, but you can put images there if you just want them available at the base of your site, and you don't want Astro to do too much with them. However, if you want Astro to optimize them on build, you need to put them inside of your SRC directory, and that's the second place you can put images. Now, by convention, these are usually put in an assets folder like this, although you don't have to put it in there, but I will because that's what I typically do. Okay, so it's right here in my assets folder. And the difference here is you have to import them up top. So let's come over here and I'll simply say import. We'll just say SRC image. You can name it whatever you want from, and this is a relative path to the assets and then SRC. Then you can simply reference it down this way. Let's again, just do a normal image tag to start with. We go into the SRC. Now that it's been imported, I have a bunch of properties available on this. So it's an actual object. And if I hit dot, you'll see I've got format, height, orientation, all this stuff. I need to pass in the SRC itself then I can simply close it off like this. And now this one shows right over here. So those are the two places you can put images inside of your project. You can, however, also reference images exterior to your project right over here. So you can just do normal remote images. Let's go ahead and copy the image address right here. And what I could do is just replace this here with the string, right? And now the, the remote image is in here. So those are the three places you can use images from in your project. Usually this would be some kind of CDN or something like that, but wherever it happens to be, you can reference images just like this. So for public images, you would just reference them with a string at the root of your site. With SRC images, you would reference them by importing them and then grabbing the SRC property off that import. And with public images, again, you would just have this time a full URL to the actual image. Next, let's talk about the three tools that Astro gives you. There are three tools. The first one is the image component like this. And you'll notice this comes from Astro colon assets. If I click this, it should import it up top and it does. So you can just simply pass on an SRC, which we'll talk about in a second. The second tool is the picture component. Once again, this comes from Astro colon assets, and if I hit enter, it should import it. We'll talk about that in a second. The third tool is something you only use server side, and it is the get image function. You'll notice again, this comes from Astro colon assets, and if I hit enter, this should import it. Now here, it does the same optimization, but it does it server side, so you can use this either in the front matter up here, or you can use it in server side code like an API route. So we'll talk about these each in order. First of all, let's talk about this image component. At the end of the day, the image component will output a normal HTML image tag. However, it does some extra optimizations. And depending on where you're pulling the image from, whether it's your public, your SRC, or remote image, it changes how you interact with this custom component. So let's go ahead and start by referencing here a public image. I'm gonna do this in two different ways. First of all, we're gonna have an image tag. This will simply point to our public.jpg, and we'll close this off. And the second one here is going to use the Astro image component. Here, once again, we have an SRC we would point it to the exact same place, public.jpg. However, the image component gives you a couple helps that make sure you're following best practices. So first of all, you have to always provide an alt. Now this can just be an empty string if this is not important and it doesn't need to be called out by screen readers, but you do have to have an alt here, whether it's an empty string or an actual description of the image. The other thing you have to have for public images is you have to mandatorily provide a width and a height. So we're gonna set this width at 480 and we'll set a height at 270. Now, if I come over this way, we're going to see both images, this big first one, and then this second one down here with the image component. Let's look at the difference between them to see the value that Astro is providing us. Now, because this is in the public directory, it can only do so much. You're going to see it's not that much help because we're not able to optimize it like we might want to. 
So you'll look over here, you'll notice this is the first one. Nothing's been done to it, it's just referenced, it's just a normal image. However, over here, you'll notice that we've got both the width and the height, that's what we had to pass along, but it's also provided a few attributes. Loading equals lazy, and decoding is async. Now these are best practices for modern images. However, if it's at the top of your page, you may want it to load right away, and you can change this to loading equals eager, which is the default in most browsers. But usually what you want is an image to not load until it's actually on the viewport. However, you can see I can override that if I want to, and now it will load right away. So it can't provide that much help because we're in the public directory pulling those images. Let's now look at how this would work for the SRC. So I'm gonna copy both of these down right here. And you might remember we've already imported that up top. So we can simply reference this as SRC image. And then remember for a normal image tag, you have to pick off the property of SRC. Now, when you're using the image component built by Astro, you could just pass the entire thing, image like that, and it will actually pick off what it needs here. Once again, you have to provide an alt. However, you don't need to provide a width and height if you don't want to. The reason is because Astro's image component can actually infer this from the image itself because it's referencing it directly in the SRC directory. Now, of course, if you want to, you can pass on a width and height and some extra special stuff is going to happen now that Astro can actually touch these images. So let me come over to the network tab and we're going to reload and let's look just right over here. All right, right over here, notice that we've got different sizes of images. These first two, this JPEG and this JPEG are these images right here. Notice however that right here, it's actually optimizing the image. Look, it's only 5.4 kilobytes versus the massive size of these ones right here. Now Astro does all this by default. It's also changed the type to WebP, so it's actually converted it. And because I set a width and height manually, it's actually resized the image to make it smaller. If I come over here and we inspect the image, you're gonna notice the difference between the two. This one right here doesn't do any optimization whatsoever. However, down here, what we've done is actually converted the image type and added in all those attributes. The end benefit for the user is that they get a much smaller image that's the exact size they need. Finally, let's talk about referencing remote images. So let's copy this down and let's now look at a remote image. I'm gonna come over here and just paste in the full string of the URL and then let's do the exact same thing down below. Now, one thing to note is for these remote images, you have to provide a width and height once again. However, you do get an extra little helper, and that is if you want to, you can pass an infer size attribute, and the Astro image component will be able to infer the size so you don't have to actually manually type this out. Now, with remote images, there's one other little hook, and that is that if you want to optimize images, you have to actually pass it URLs that you're okay with Astro using it. You can pass this either as a pattern or you can pass individual URLs. So like if you have a CDN, you might want to say, I want to let you optimize images from that CDN. Now, where would you do that? Well, in your Astro config. So if I come over here, all I have to do is pass in the image property. And if you're gonna pass in a domain, you'll just simply pass in domains. And this is just a, an array of strings. All right, so let's go ahead and paste in that domain and save. And then I'm gonna come over here and just restart the dev server. Sometimes you have to do this when you change up the configuration file. Now, you notice down here, I'm still only getting one image in, which means it's not actually optimizing this at all. And I think the culprit is here, you have to actually pass true. There we go, and now it's actually inferring this correctly, the size, width, and height, so it can actually optimize the image. You'll notice that it's automatically converted this to a WebP. So with remote images, you have to add that extra step of actually adding in a domain that you can then tell Astro is okay for it to optimize. Now, before we move on to the second tool, that picture tool, let me just talk about a couple of other options you have available to you here when using the image component. First of all, you can pass in a width and height like we've already seen, but you can also pass in a format. Now, there are a bunch of different things you can pass in here, but for instance, I could change this to AVIF to make it more optimized. You'll notice here, I've got this down to 2.9 kilobytes. Pretty cool, right? Now, you can also actually pass in a quality, and you can do this in one of two ways. You can either pass a number from zero to 100, but that will change on the type of image that you're converting this to. So they've also provided some helpers here that are strings, high, low, max, or mid. So let's go ahead and choose something like uh, high, and that will do a high image quality, and it will kind of try to space that out across the different formats you have available to you. Now, just to make this a little cleaner, let's go ahead and get rid of this, and we'll go ahead and get rid of this one, and we'll get rid of this one. So we can actually just deal with the one image right now. And again, these optimized images right here, you can see the high quality here. If I change this to low, you're gonna see the difference in the text. So a lot lower. If I change this to max, it should be the maximum it can be for that size. Now, if I come over here and we inspect the element itself, you'll notice that it's still just a single SRC property. If I come over here to the image documentation, you'll notice that there's two other things we can pass along. Both of these will provide an SRC set property. Now this gives the browser options, different images that it can actually use. So for instance, if I come over here, we can pass in some densities. Let's go ahead and do that right here. 
and you have to choose between these two options. So this is pixel density of either 1.5 or 2, and it will basically generate multiple images at those densities. So if I refresh here, you'll notice that it's actually now also giving me this SRC set property with multiple different images with multiple density points. Then the browser can choose which one's best based on the screen that's coming there. The other option you have, if you also want to provide an SRC set property, are these widths. Now these widths, you can see down this way, you can provide both widths, and then you also have to provide sizes. So let me just copy these as well, and we'll replace the densities. Again, you have to choose between widths and densities. And here, this isn't my image. If I hit Command-D, this would be SRC image dot width. What it's going to do now is provide now three different sizes, or four, I guess, the default and three others. And if I refresh here, you'll notice that it's now given it not pixel densities, but widths of images. And that's what the browser can use to choose which one it should show. So if I come over here to the network tab, you're going to see that this, let's actually get a little bit bigger. You'll see that this image right here, it looks like it's 480 pixels wide. However, if I get really small and I refresh, and let's check it out now, you'll see it says 540. So it's actually changed the size. Now, based on this and the size of my actual image, this doesn't quite work because it's picking this one, where really it probably should be choosing the smaller one. It's just the way I've set the width in combination with these. But you're basically giving the browser a set of different widths. And obviously you want your biggest one to be whatever the size this one would be. But now the browser is trying to choose which image based on the different width. If you need more help understanding the different widths and sizes properties that are available on image tags, there's a really great article on MDM. I'll try to remember to link in the description. Okay, so that's the first tool, and that's the longest one we're going to spend time on, is this image component. The second tool is the picture component. So let's come over here, and we're just going to swap this one out right here. So picture, and then I'm actually going to kill a bunch of these things just to make it a little simpler for us, because most of the things you can do with an image tag, you can also do on a picture tag. The difference here, if I come inside here and we inspect this, is you'll notice I still have my image tag, but I also have the picture wrapper all around this. Now here I'm not going to get in the difference between image tags and pictures tags, but if you want to use a picture tag, you now can do that with this picture component. Once again, it provides all the same optimizations. However, you do get some extra features when it comes to the picture tag. Here you'll notice what you can do is pass in multiple different formats. So I could pass in both AVIF and WebP, or maybe even a fallback of JPEG. And that way I've got different options depending on what I want. So let's go ahead and do that. And maybe I'll add one more, which would just be my JPEG. Now, the first one you pass in is going to be the one that it will prefer. And then if the browser can't support it, whatever this is rendered on, it will render this one instead. So if I come over here, you're going to notice that I've got a bunch of files now optimized for me by default. All these different sources, all these images have been created by Astro on build. Back over to the documentation, you've got a lot of the same properties. You've got a fallback format that you can use for the actual image tag itself. So I know this is a JPEG, so I'm going to say, hey, if their browser can't support any of those, let's have this fallback format simply be JPEG. Now, because there's an actual picture tag that's rendered, you may want to pass along some properties or attributes to that picture tag. And you can do that with this picture's attribute. Let's see an example of this right over here. You can see they've passed in this background color red to the picture's attribute, which will then be applied to the actual picture tag itself. Now, in addition to style, let's say you're using something like Tailwind, inside of this object, you can also have a classes attribute that you pass down to the picture tag itself. Anything else you actually put on the picture tag, in other words, not inside of the picture's attribute, will be applied to the image itself, that image tag embedded inside the picture tag. Now, other than that, working with the picture tag is almost exactly like working with the image tag. It's referenced the same way in a public image and in a remote image like you saw earlier. So that's the second tool, the picture component. Finally, the third tool is for use only on the server, and this is the get image function. You'll notice that you get a lot of the same optimization, but again, it's all server side. So let me go ahead and copy this script. We're going to come up top here and we'll just paste it in right here. Now this optimized image, I want to actually pass in an image here. This would be my SRC image. And then I can pass along a lot of the same things you might see in an image tag. And what I get out of this, if I go ahead and console log this, and then let's go ahead and open up the terminal here, you'll notice that I'm actually getting back a lot of the same things you'd get in an image tag, except this time I'm getting it in an object. So I've got access to the optimized image. I've got access to the different attributes I have available to me, along with any other things I might pass along to the image. That means I can simply apply this like this. So let's go ahead and grab this style right here, and we'll just copy this declaration. I can add this, for instance, to the body like this, and then come over this way, and you'll notice that the entire body now has that as a background image. Now, of course, you don't have to just use the get image function in the front matter of a document. You can use it anywhere that would be server side. So for instance, this could be an API route or anywhere else. Now there's a bunch more you can do with images in Astro. For instance, you can use them in Markdown documents automatically and Astro will optimize any images you reference in your SRC directory. And you can also use them in Astro's content collections, which are one of Astro's real superpowers.
but I hope understanding the three different locations, public, the SRC folder, or a remote image, and also the three tools available to you, the image component, the picture component, and the get image function, give you a head start to understanding how to work with images in Astro. Well, I hope that was a big help to you in understanding how to work with images in Astro. If you have more interest in learning more about this, you can check out my course at learnastro.dev. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.